Hello, this is our service for the 9th of May and we're once again pleased that you're able to join us today. Again, all our hymns are in both CH3 and in CH4 and I'll be giving the numbers so that if you're listening on the telephone, uh, you'll be able to sing along if you have one of the hymn books. Perhaps I should say at this point that if you don't have a hymn book, uh, we certainly have some spare copies of CH3 that I could get to you if you need one. But now we turn to the Lord in our worship. We listen to these words of the prophet Isaiah. He says, Lord, you are my God. I will honour you and praise your name. The poor and the helpless have fled to you and have been safe in times of trouble. You give them shelter from storms and shade from the burning heat. So let us praise our God as one. Our first hymn today is from CH3 at number 425 and from CH4 at number 624. In Christ there is no east or west. Before we continue with our service today, I just want to have a wee word about forthcoming services. At our in-person service today at Colliston Church, we're celebrating communion. Next Sunday, in-person worship is at Freecombe at 10am and at Invercila at 11.30am. Now, both of these services will also include the Sacrament of Holy Communion. And so I'll be also including communion in our online worship next week. So those of you who are, uh, who are at home and follow online, uh, you will need to have bread and wine to hand if you wish to partake with us. But now let's continue our service and we turn to God's word and we listen to our first reading. Our reading today is from the Gospel according to Luke from chapter 6 verses 20 to 26. Jesus looked at his disciples and said, Happy are you poor, the kingdom of God is yours. Happy are you who are hungry now, you will be filled. Happy are you who weep now, you will laugh. Happy are you when people hate you, reject you, insult you and say that you are evil, all because of the Son of Man. Be glad when that happens and dance for joy because a great reward is kept for you in heaven. For their ancestors did the very same things to the prophets. But how terrible for you who are rich now! You have had your easy life. How terrible for you who are full now! You will go hungry. How terrible for you who laugh now! You will mourn and weep. How terrible when all people speak well of you! Their ancestors said the very same things about the false prophets. 
May God add his blessing to this reading from his word. Amen. Let us pray. O great and wonderful God, to you alone belongs glory and honour and power. You made the whole universe and everything within it, all that lives and breathes. In Jesus Christ, your Son, you have shown us what a human life should be like, and you have called us to follow in his way. So we worship you and we praise you, acknowledging that without you we are only half alive, and thanking you for the meaning that you give to our lives. Yet, Lord, it is your meaning to give. And you have turned our values upside down. And so we find it hard to take. Happy are you poor, you said. But we like to think that we are self-sufficient. Happy are you who are hungry now, you said. But we crave ease and comfort. Happy are you who weep now, you said. But we turn away from sharing the pain of others. Happy are you when people hate you, reject you, insult you, all because of the Son of Man, you said. But we prefer to leave peacemaking to others and prefer not to get involved. Forgive us, Lord that we like to take the comfort from our Christian faith, but too often ignore the challenges it brings. By your power, set us free from our failures and help the values of your kingdom to grow in our hearts and lives, this and every day, through Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our second hymn today is found in CH3 at number 485 and at num in CH4 at number 542. Lord, speak to me that I may speak.
Let us pray. Gracious Lord, inspire us to hear your word, that it may strengthen us in service. Amen. Last week I spoke about Christ's call for his people to tend to the needy as one of the marks of the church's mission. We were reminded of the words of Isaiah that Jesus read out in the synagogue at Nazareth at the beginning of his ministry. Well, not long afterwards, as he travelled from place to place, Jesus spoke to the people with the words of the Beatitudes. Today we have heard them from the Gospel according to Luke and from what is called the Sermon on the Plain. Well, the Gospel according to Matthew has a slightly different, more spiritualised version from what we call the Sermon on the Mount. So where Luke has blessed are the poor, Matthew has blessed are the poor in spirit. Which is closer to the original? Well, we cannot know. Perhaps Jesus spoke similar words on more than one occasion. Are we then to prefer one over the other? Well, no, actually, because they're both important. But it cannot be denied that Luke's version is the more challenging. For Luke really means us to accept these words. Luke's version is more challenging because these words leave us nowhere to go, nowhere to hide. If it's the poor who are happy, then what about the rich who face a terrible future? For those who are rich now and have had their easy life, where does that leave us who are rich? And if things are terrible for those of us who are full now, and for those who laugh now, what hope do we have? What hope for those who are full and who know security? Does God really condemn the rich simply for being rich and bless the poor simply for being poor? It is a phrase often quoted in the church that God has a priority to the poor. But what does that mean? Does it mean that there is no hope for the rich? Well, certainly Jesus said that it is harder for a rich person to enter the kingdom of God than it is for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle. Well, some think that these words refer to a well-known narrow path that wasn't wide enough for a camel laden with bags to walk through, but through which the unencumbered could pass quite easily. Well, whatever the metaphor, we get it. We must enter the kingdom of God without anything to weigh us down. The Swiss theologian Karl Barth wrote about a hundred years ago that we cannot revere God and something else because we end up neglecting God and revering only the tangible something else that we can see and experience. So, for example, we cannot worship God and creation. And we cannot worship God and money. And we cannot worship God and a political philosophy, however noble we might think it to be. After all, we might think something which is natural is good by definition and Let's face it, advertisers tell us that all the time. Buy this yogurt because it's natural. But what if nature itself is tainted so that DNA mutates to cause cancer, disorder and disease? And we cannot worship God and money because in the end we begin to see wealth as our strength and stay and it becomes our priority for living. And we cannot serve God and politics because then we begin to prioritise our own preferences over others. We exclude others and we label them and divide them according to imagined difference. No, we must worship God. And when we worship God alone and seek his kingdom first of all, 
Then our priority is for his justice and his peace in creation, in society, between people. And this is true blessing. So when Jesus spoke to the people in the Sermon on the Plain with the words of the Beatitudes, he challenged the prevailing understanding of blessing and he turned the world on its head. You see, the Jews believed, as have many through the ages, that to be wealthy or well or happy was a sign that someone was blessed by God. Being poor, on the other hand, was a sign of not being blessed by God. Being sick was a sign that someone had sinned before God. It's the idea that bad things happen when we do bad things, and good things happen as a reward for faithfulness. But that's not the way it is, said Jesus. People become wealthy and they maintain their wealth Not because they are blessed, but because they too quickly learn to rely upon that wealth in the tangible that they can see. And then they forget the justice of God. The poor, on the other hand, have no choice but to trust in God because they have no one else that they can rely upon. Now, it is true that our society is very different today than it was in Jesus' day. We in our country have an NHS and a welfare state paid for by taxes that we all contribute to. The people of Jesus' day had no such thing. Yet Luke's words apply just as much to us and they challenge us in our day. Although society has changed and changed hugely, people haven't. In every generation and in every place, people think similarly, with an air of entitlement and superiority. And so it becomes very easy to look improperly at our sisters and brothers in society. It's easy to look to the poor and imagine that they're poor because they're work shy rather than overwhelmed by circumstances that are against them. It's easy to look to the wealthy and imagine that they're cold-hearted rather than uncertain about how they can really make a difference. So Jesus in Luke's gospel invites us to examine ourselves. Not just to think about these words as a philosophical exercise, but to truly and to honestly ask ourselves, who am I here? Am I poor or am I rich? And if I'm poor, does that change the way I behave? And if I'm rich, does that change the way I behave? Do I therefore see my sisters and brothers wrongly? What more could I do for justice and peace? It's not being wealthy in itself that's the issue. It is that wealth often shields us from engaging in seeking justice. And if it's a barrier to the kingdom, well then, is that wealth really worth it? Jesus elsewhere said that if your hand makes you lose your faith, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life without a hand than keep both hands and go off to hell. Well, how much more important is a hand than wealth? The truth is that it is impossible for us to enter the kingdom of God whilst we rely upon our wealth. And it's hard to change that mindset, but not impossible. For Jesus helps us to do it by the Spirit. And so Jesus invites us, demands of us even, that we face the truth of ourselves and that we change our minds and our actions, that we trust only him and put his kingdom first. So we may speak of God's priority to the poor. Personally, I must confess that I do have a little trouble with that phrase because I think that it in itself can lead to lazy 
and judgmental thinking. It becomes too easy then to condemn the wealthy simply for being wealthy. And I think it's a similar pattern of thinking to the BLM movement when it speaks of white privilege. Now, I'm not saying that none of these things are an issue because they absolutely are. And it is of a similar kind to the disparity of power between rich and poor, where some have power and some have none, and injustice and division follow. But such thinking in itself can lead to labelling and othering and division, and perhaps inevitably so. The truth is that wealth or privilege of any kind can inoculate us against the needs of justice and the demand for it that those in need must live with daily. And we must all play our part in seeking the justice of the kingdom. And so we do speak of God's prior priority for the poor. It's a kind of shorthand or, or a concrete illustration of God's priority for justice and peace. And this is part of our calling as the Church of Jesus Christ, to transform unjust structures of society, to challenge violence of every kind, and pursue peace and reconciliation. This is what Jesus did. This is what Jesus challenges us to do. So where do we fit in with the Beatitudes in Luke? Do we live as the rich, as if wealth is our source of strength and privilege, as if it is our fortress? Do we miss the injustice around us, blind to the needs of the poor? Or do we set aside our wealth and live in faith and act as those who must trust in God alone for justice? For we cannot trust both God and something else. Let us then trust in God alone, who is made known to us in Christ Jesus. Let us seek his peace and pursue it as God in Christ has sought and saved us, his people. And let us speak and act in justice that his kingdom is known in us. Amen. And thanks be to God. Our third hymn today from CH3, number 514, and CH4, number 269, the hymn, Eternal Ruler of the Ceaseless Round.
Let us pray. Generous God, we thank you for our homes and for all the places where we feel safe and protected. We thank you for food to give us strength and furniture to rest our bodies upon. We thank you for the door to open to friend and stranger and for doors to close when we need peace. Compassionate God, help us to hold in our hearts the people who cannot say that prayer, those who depend on hospitality and cannot offer it, those who find no hospitality, those whose house is no home. Disturbing God in today's world, we are defined by what we consume, not by what we build. But your world is not like that. And we should not be comfortable when others have no share in our comfort. So shatter our complacency and give us the strength to work for a world of justice and to build bridges in our communities. Heavenly Father, we pray for our governments and for all people who take decisions which affect the lives of the vulnerable and oppressed. Guide them to follow your will and make decisions for the common good. And Spirit of God, protect all who are victims of violence and injustice. Shelter them from all that is harmful. Enable them to seek out your face and build their lives in you. So, Lord Jesus, be present in our own community, particularly for those most in need. Enable us as people to live out your gospel message to one another. Lord, we pray for those services that support people who are in need, social services, health services, the Benefits Agency and the many voluntary groups and organisations who help others. May they be professional, efficient and always have the needs of those they serve at the forefront of their work. And particularly we pray for those whose lives have been so badly affected by COVID or other recent disasters and for all that can offer help. And we pray also for those known to us who feel that they are unable to live fully because of illness or infirmity or through loneliness or grief. May they know your peace and the strength of your mighty hand. We ask these things in your name, O Lord, our Saviour. Amen. And our final hymn today from CH3, number 649, from CH4, number 221, Saviour, again to thy dear name we raise.
Dwell now in joy and peace, walking in the way of the Lord, acknowledging him in all that you do and knowing his presence with you. The blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son and Spirit be with you all, now and forevermore.